So, can you just raise your hand right now if your children's father may have wronged you in any way, if he may have cheated, if he abandoned, if he used you, if he did anything, if he did anything wrong to you. And it, and, it, and it brings you here to a single mother's conference. I just want you to raise your hand. There's a reason why you're a single mother. Am I right? Okay, so with that hand raised at the same time, what I want everybody in here to do is forgive him. Forgive him. You got to forgive him. Not for him, but you gotta forgive him so you can move on. I am a single mother of four children. Three of them are in college at this time, and I have a 12 year old. I'm 48 years old. I'm a divorced mother of two children. I am a single mom. I have two daughters. My oldest is seven. My youngest is three. I, too, am a single mother of a 19-year-old um, college student. Okay, so being a single mom at 21, um, I lived away from my family. I lived in New Jersey, and I have my daughter. Me, too. Recovering addict. Went through the program as well. Um, I have three children. Basically, my story is I'm a single mother. I'm a grandmother, actually. I became a single mother. My grandfather, when well, my granddaughter was four years old. No, I'm sorry, newborn, three weeks old. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. It's not fair. And 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 to be quite frank with you, it is not something you expected. Okay. Um, I started out. In school, as a very good student, I got distracted at an early age, went into a drug addiction that lasted about until I graduated from college, even after I had my kids. Currently, I am a student at Dover Community College, so I'm a full-time student. My personal story and how I became a single mother, um, I, I was a teenage mom, I had my daughter at the age of 14, and I was in an abusive relationship with her father from the time I was 14 till she was born um, when she was when I, when I was 19. And I finally stopped using it in 1999, and that was through the help of Chester County. Chester County had sent me to 11 rehabs, four halfway houses, and five detoxes over a period of 10 years. And it was kind of hard um, in the beginning because I was away from my family that supported me and helped me always. And having the father of the child not being in there made it even worse because I was alone doing everything. I was mom, dad, you know, I worked, full time job. And it was pretty hard. It's just being in court in this area, and a few of the girls from the program are there. Uh, she's one of them. Um, my daughter has a, a daughter, so I'm a grandma and I'm proud of that. And she's a single mom. And it's really hard for her because her situation with the father of the child is not good. She'll be starting kindergarten really? in September. Aww. And I'm very excited because this is all new. But I push her because I know and she knows what I went through. You know, I try to push her so she can get yeah. better education, okay. continue awesome. her school, and yeah. to get a better job. And so that way she can give that experience to her daughter. Yeah. My son passed away in 2008, and that's why I have Caitlin and Mom to go. Uh, I raised her, and then I decided to go ahead and a doctor. So but the truth of the matter is, is that you got to deal with it. It's the hand you were dealt, and you have to deal with it. I know that we didn't choose to be here, we didn't choose to be single parents, but the fact of the matter is we are. Interface purpose is to pay part of your rent when you're in an apartment. And I don't need that assistance from them right now, but I do need that budgeting help. Um, I. It, I need to be accountable to someone else right now, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. When I got clean, I went to work in human services. I'm no longer working at this time. I'm recently disabled since 2011. 
Interfaith has helped me financially, but they, they've also helped me in a lot of other ways, too. I don't have income. I'm fighting Social Security. I can't work. And I still have 12 years that I have to raise. You never know where your help's going to come from. And I thought it would be my family and my church, per se, but it wasn't. It's was from this county. I have met some people who have made Christmas last year in my house. They have dressed my son to return to school. They have supplied cleaning products. They supplied meals after my surgeries. I've had three surgeries. You don't always realize, like, if your daughter wants to play softball, it doesn't, the thought doesn't occur to you it's going to cost you $65 for a glove and a bat and a ball, plus it's $75 to play the softball. So I'm lucky to have a lot of family. The thing that's hard is I had a one bedroom apartment, and it's hard for a child that's five where the toys are growing, but there's no more space in the apartment. And in Chester County, it's very hard to afford an apartment for two bedrooms for a single mother. And uh, I'm still amazed at how many people there are in this community that really care about others. They're not giving quote unquote things away. You're you're working to get that assistance. And and if I don't have my receipts done every month, I can't come back. There's no point in me coming back. So it, they make you be accountable. Whatever your feeling is, whether it's anger, whatever your feeling is, you've got to know that your kids hear you. They hear you. They feel you. That relationship with our father really destroyed my inner self-esteem. It, it, it destroyed me from a standpoint of feeling that I wasn't worthy, that I wasn't deserving, and that I did not or I could not be loved. And when, when, when you have those type of insecurities, when you have those type of, when you feel that way about yourself, there's no way you can then love this, this child that you brought into the world if you can't first find healing within yourself. So it's been uh, almost 20 years since I've gone through, through that situation and um, I've learned to forgive, forgive myself first and then forgive him for what he, for what he did and for the abuse because I know that through that healing, through the forgiveness, there was healing. You gotta be free, emotionally unshackled to do what you have to do and that is to raise your children. Expect and prepare for victory, increase, and restoration for you and your children. And if you do this, they're going to follow your lead. I, if you would have asked me this right after my divorce, you know, the world was ending. I didn't have a job. I didn't know how I was going to pay for anything. But slowly but surely, things fell into place and God provided a way. My children motivate me and I motivate them. They've inspired me a lot, I would say. Um, they're a lot of my motivation. I'm also a member of AA, and they're a big part of my motivation for staying sober. My church plays a big part of my life because without God, nothing is possible. My spirituality keeps me going from day to day right now. When you don't forgive, you become what you hate. Being a single mother is not easy. Um, it's difficult. You have to juggle your time. I just worked really hard. Worked two jobs, actually. There's some things are not needed to you. And if you go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to come out and get this, go out and get it. But you have to, you know, I knew that one day I was going to do something with myself. It's difficult, but it's doable also. The struggle 
has been hard, but it's made me a better person. Not everybody is the same. So you gotta stop drinking the poison, and you gotta learn to forget it.